This is an important moment for Biscayne Bay because it was brought to my attention um, weeks and weeks ago that there was a new rookery that was found right in front of Morningside. We actually went on Monday, we took a tour on a kayak and I had the opportunity to experience the beauty that um, is happening in this rookery. It's a moment of awareness, it's a moment of protection, and that is why today we have decided to include an item to direct the city to work with the county, to work with the state, and to work with every entity possible to make sure that we can protect the rookery. I am hoping this item can pass today, and of course that's why we have all of this team of environmentalists and friends of Biscayne Bay that are actually here to make sure that we can make our point to my colleagues on commission to protect the rookery in front of Morningside. Being said that, Laura Reynolds, Vice President of Friends of Biscayne Bay, is going to be introducing all of the speakers today and of course we're going to be open to answer questions after the press conference. Thank you Commissioner for your leadership and what I'm going to do is bring up each of our environmental groups that are here. Uh, Albert Gomez from Biscayne Bay Marine Health Coalition He's on the advisory board. Good morning. Um, I just, I'm here to basically talk about uh, my city of Miami priorities. Um, realistically, we're at a stage uh, with our environment and specifically Biscayne Bay where we either lead with our actions um, or we talk about it and the bay dies around us. And effectively, we've been witnessing this uh, for several years. The decline of the bay, the impacts of humans, whether it be through pollution and or through mismanagement of the islands, just misuse of them. Um, effectively, um, Commissioner Covo has taken the leadership to bring this ordinance to bear to put a added protection of a no motorized zone around the rookery and an idle speed zone in the channel, which is a good step to protecting um, the, the birds and the wildlife in the rookery. Um, effectively, if, if we as a people, as a city, um, really stand for the city beautiful and the, and, and the natural environment that we so much enjoy, the environmental benefits of that and, uh, and the financial benefits of that, um, we'll, the commission will stand for this item. They'll either stand for it or they won't. This is a moment in time where we will, it will define the values of our city. I am hoping that with the support of the, uh, the community here that has come out for this issue, that we can um, show that our city is for our natural environment, our natural resources, and understands the connection between the public trust and those natural resources. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and next up is Christopher Boinkin from the Pelican Harbor Seabird Station. Good morning. Thank you, Laurie. Commissioner Covo. Um, I'm with Pelican Harbor Seabird Station, and over the last um, 43 years, we've treated 42,000 native wildlife patients, including 9,000 brown pelicans. In 1779, a British Royal Survey crew dis dis found Biscayne Bay, and they named Bird Key Bird Key because of the abundant bird life there. So for 3.5 centuries, this island has wowed and marveled people, and it ceased to exist in 2019-2020. And we're so lucky that part of the rookery relocated to, Morning, to Mangrove Island off Morningside. We cannot lose this critical resource. Um, Miami is such a magical, well-known city around the world. And we're on the edge of the Everglades, the Florida Reef Tract. We, our eyes are on Miami with climate change. And these birds are so amazing, 20 different species. Um, and brown pelicans were delisted from endanger, endangered in 2009, but we must protect them. And so Pelican Harbor Seabird Station absolutely advocates for no wake zone, idle speed zone, no entry zone for motorized craft, and a critical wildlife area for these islands. Um, thank you so much. We must protect them. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. And next up, uh, Sandy Moisey from Urban Paradise Guild. She's on the board. Good morning. First, thank you to Commissioner Kovo for your courageous leadership and concern for the environment to take on this initiative. Today really shouldn't be about whether or not we should protect the rookery, but how are we going to protect it and how fast can we get our protections implemented? And why does this matter to us? It matters because all life, our marine life, our wildlife, our plant life, 
is interconnected with us, with us human beings. Our, our existence depends on their existence. The rookery has a special meaning to me because for me it was born during the pandemic uh, at a time when um, there was a lot of anxiety and a lot of grief in our, in our world. I used to walk to Morningside Park and sit on the floating dock every morning at sunrise and I started noticing all of these birds taking flight and they would take flight in a pattern and it just brought so much uh, serenity, so much peace, so much love and I think it's, it's so important that we recognize how important nature is, not only for our economic impact, $64 billion the uh, Biscayne Bay brings to our community, but also the other value that it brings, the value to our, our emotional health, the value to our happiness. So I think it's important that we, we make special notice of the nature that's around us, of our city beautiful. City beautiful is not all of the not only the wonderful architecture and, and amazing buildings, but it's also the natural beauty in the city of Miami. We're very unique in our ecosystem here, and we need to recognize our uniqueness and appreciate our uniqueness and fight to protect everything that we have in the city of Miami. Thank you. Very well said, very well said. Um, next up is Dave Dobler from Volunteer Cleanup and the Marine Health Summit. Biscayne Bay represents $64 billion of economic activity to Miami-Dade County. And it is really the heart, the blue heart of real estate, of tourism and uh, recreation. And we are not treating the Bay with the love and respect that it deserves in order to protect it for future generations and protect our investments. Um, this is Albert Pallet Park, and this is not beautiful. And so if we're going to be the city beautiful, we need, to, we need to start respecting it and taking care of it better. Thank you. So this coalition that you see here behind me, you've heard from numerous organizations. Um, we think that this is a wonderful first step, um, but we do think that this entire area needs protection. So we intend to work together to provide uh, additional data documenting the birds' activities among these islands, and we intend to turn that in to FWC and any entity that's responsible for the islands in the area to try to make sure that we do the right thing. We know that we need additional funding for enforcement. We know that we need additional protections around each of the islands that are being used by wildlife, and so we see this as a first step and I want to thank you for joining us.